Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the Banner Saga. Um, so, things are looking a little bit better than they were before. We have days of supplies. We have, well, all right, we're still really down on uh, combatants, unfortunately, which means we're going to have to put a lot of burden on our heroes if we get into any conflicts. Um, and we don't have any more renown to spend, so we're actually just going to have to leave here and travel on. At least no one will starve anymore. So we got that going for us. All right, where are we going next? I'm glad we're getting out of the snow. Like, I like greenery a bit more. Unar, the quirky old man with the leather headband, says, If there's one thing I know better than women and mead, it's... Well, he smiles. Well, nothing. But I know when a group could use some help. Just to nod and let old Unar make everything better. No questions now. Um... Sure, I'd appreciate any help. This dude seems on the level. That evening, Unar clears his throat and loudly recites a tale of travelers, ending with war and death behind them. Seeking hope instead, they carried on with courage, using heart and head. A strange poem, but the caravan is happy for a change of pace. Unar bows and turns to assist the cooks. The evening's meal is larger than ever, yet the supply wagon seems more full than before. You look to thank Unar, but he is gone. Uh, oh, okay. Well, he gave us a bunch of supplies. Our morale's down as well. Alright, we want to keep an eye on that, because we don't want our, uh... Willpower to be too low when we start fights. Oh, heard a godstone. Cool. Uh, hopefully there will be an event here that will bump our morale up. There usually is if we pick the right choices. The god... <coughs> Excuse me. The godstone for Ingrid, a goddess of knowledge, looks on as the caravan takes a much-needed rest. Ivor shoes some children away from a solitary dredge slinger lying dead beneath the stone. Should we be worried about that? You ask Ivor, pointing to the dredge body. I don't think so, he replies. Still, couldn't hurt to have a few guards look around. Hours pass without warning. Um, inspect the godstone. Ingrid's godstone is carved with ancient runes, which don't make much sense to you, though Avon tells you some of the menders have deciphered them. It's how the menders learned the language of the gods. Past the largest stone, a long series of slabs contain more writing all the way down the hill. But the odd thing, he tells you, is that the writing occasionally changes depending on who is reading it. Usually it describes the history of the gods, but it can be about nearly any topic. Sadly, Avon doesn't know how to read it himself. Juno could, he says. Alright, pack up and move on. As you're ready to depart, you hear screams from near the main godstone. The same boys so curious about the dead dredge before are shrieking and pointing. For a moment, you think must not have, it must not have been dread, dead, but then you see what they have opened a wrapping that was in the dredge's hands. Wait, says Ivor, his arms across your chest. This shouldn't be seen. Get everyone away. A chill sweeps over you. Alette pushes past and gasps, Stop! Shouts Ivor, but the curious onlookers have already seen it. Leave it, says Ivor. On the ground before the dead slinger is a small, stony figure. Its hands searching for something it can't find. That's a... baby, says Oddleaf. That dredge is a woman, says Rook. We've been killing women? We've been slaughtering women and children this whole time, asks Oddleaf. Leaving them to die? In a war, it's only the males who fight, says Ivor. We've been fighting these dredge the whole way, says Rook. Why are women and children on their backs attacking us? They're not invading, says Ivor. They're running. Everyone stops dead in their tracks. The entire caravan is gathered around, aghast. When I spoke to Juno, she told me something was coming, says Avent. She didn't know what. A darkness, something black, is covering the world, and the dredge are running from it, just as we are running from them. The serpent, the quake, it's all the beginning of the end. Ivor, you knew, says Oddleaf. Why? Why didn't you say something? Uh, Ivor? When I was young, I killed one of the Sunder, says Ivor, during the Second Great War. We called it Rays. Every time we would build our defenses, it would flatten them and push us back again. I became separated from the rest of the Varl Varl and stumbled upon Rays deep in a snowstorm, alone. She was nursing. I threw my axe, twisted in the wind. Her son died in her arms. She was so pathetic, kneeling in the snow. She didn't even try to stop me when I took her head. That's how I killed a Sunder. When I found my way to Grofheim, the Varl wanted to make me Kender, next to be king. I left, walked until I ended up in Skogar, where no one knew what I had done. The only sound is the wind blowing through the trees. Alright, there you go. Discovering the story of Ivor. For a long time, nobody says a thing until a child breaks the silence. What do we do with that baby? She asks. A lump forms in your throat, looking at the small obsidian creature squirming before you. 
Um, we can't leave a leave a baby out. We're we're gonna take it with us. Maybe this might hurt our morale though. Let's let's put it to a vote. Hmm. Now we're gonna make the decision. We're taking it with us. You argue strongly for showing mercy and humanity. Some of the women in the caravan hesitantly agree to take in the dredge infant, while others are furious about bringing it along. Marl declined. Not long afterward, one of the women comes to you. Its swaddling was being held by this, she says, giving you a hairpin that looks distinctly undredge like. An inscription on the silver almost slips her notice. Persevere. From the goddess herself, if you ask me, the woman tells you. Ooh, we got an item. Alright, we should definitely camp and bump our morale back up a little bit because. Uh, we're in danger of it dropping to, like, the critically low morale. And I don't think I don't, we want that at all. Okay, let's rest. We're gonna bump our morale back up to normal, and let's take a look at this item that we just got. Uh, ta it's... nope, it's a hairpin. There. Right? Fadron Silver Brooch. One strength resist. Ooh, that actually sounds like quite a good thing to have on one of our damage dealers. If our damage dealers didn't already have better items. What is Rook carrying? Rook doesn't really need strength resist, though. Rook needs willpower so that he can use his uh, special ability more often. What item does Rook have? Oh, he's got this one. Yeah, one will per turn is better on Rook. Um, Ivor's got... 15 crit chance. Alright, plus 15 crit chance. I can do without. Hand that off to Iber. Okay. That should do for now. Let's, uh, let's be on our way here. Hopefully we're not too far from where we're going. Although we did have to take... We kind of shot ourselves in the foot by doing the, uh... Trying to push our way through the dredge there, unfortunately. It was a terrible decision on my part. You're making the usual rounds when you hear a rather loud debate coming from the area that the Varl have gathered. Ivor joins you as you approach. So they're gonna be angry, angry about the uh, dredge baby, aren't they? Uben, you'd rather be known for falling asleep and dying in the corner of a mead house than battling a sunder. Asks Kremer. Uben says no, I'd rather be known for not dying. Don't even know what you're worried about, says Kremer. I did this a hundred times in the Great Wars. Take some warriors, plow head first into the dredge. They follow you into the hills, get lost. Now they're not following you. Ubin says, when you did this a hundred times, did they have Bellower leading them? Have you never heard about the time I hit Bellower in the head with a throwing axe? Asks Crummer. Both Farl halt their debate when they suddenly notice you watching. Uh, don't stop on my account. Careful, my friend, Ubin says. A lot of old history getting thrown around here. The warriors are just noting there's a damn good number of dredge on our asses, says Crummer. Bellower pulling up the rear. This one thinks he can just wander up there and throw them off our tracks, says Ubin. How about some gratitude, asks Crummer. If I'd be happy to finally be oldest Varl in the land, Ubin. I'm never happy to lose more Varl, Crummer. Besides, I'm not convinced you're really older than me. Um, old rivalry you got here. Comments like that remind me, says Crummer. I've already wasted too much time doing nothing. In the old days, I'd already be halfway to the battlefield by now. Speaking of which... You coming, Ingvar? You could ask Bellower for your arm back. Don't think so, says Ivor. I'm not exactly in the mood right now. Alright then, says Crummer. I'll tell Hard Borg you said hello. H Hatter Hatter Borg. Never gonna pronounce any of those right. Oh dear. Okay, well they're heading off. Crummer and a good many Varl warriors head out towards the growing army of Dredge. We lost 34 Varl. I think that was all of our Varl. Is he gonna come back? Asks Rook. He always has before, says Ivor. This time it feels different, I fear, says Ubin. Okay, we don't get the option to follow him or anything. Okay, I probably should have taken the... Yep, we lost all our Varl. Okay, that's a bit of a blow. Um, we're gonna have to hope he comes back, because right now, without the Varl, and with only 78 human fighters left, we're in a really awful situation if we run into any dredge. What in the hell is happening in those woodlands near us? Nothing good would be my guess. No encouragement or tales of glory will lift the spirits of the caravan. In the north we have times like this, is one of the Varl. What Varl? I guess Varl non-combatants. 
The other giants grin, raising tankards and horns of mead. Skull, they shout, and make short work of their drinks, explaining that each person takes a drink when someone tells a story that is more miserable than the last. Elders join them for the second round, and mead is passed your way. Uh, join the giants in drinking. Maybe it'll boost morale. Taking the mead, you shout Skull. The crowd cheers, and laughter echoes through the camp for hours, as each person comes up with increasingly more absurd stories of woe. The Varl's remedy is a success, and the caravan is in a much better mood the following day, albeit hungover and with less mead than before. Oof, okay, minus 10 supplies is not great, but, you know, morale boost is fine. Oh, we're almost to Sigur home, which I think is where we were going, although I guess the question is whether... Oh, hello. Gather round, doubters, echoes a shout in the distance as Crummer and his band of warriors break through nearby foliage. And behold the invincible Varl. The caravan is thrilled to see Crummer return safely. With more Varl than he left with. Interesting. Did the plan work? Asks Ubin. Work, responded Crummer. Of course it worked. Same old dredge. Should be another day or two at least before they even find their own asses. And if you apologize, I'll tell you how I found these, Crummer says, tossing you a pair of leather gloves that look big enough for a Varl. He leans in close, whispering so Ubin can't hear. Had something to do with a raven's nest and a hair tie. Okay, um, let's check out that item real quick. Hopefully. I mean, that worked out pretty well for us, actually. We got... Somehow we got two extra Varl out of it. We got an item. We got 20 Renown, which we can always use. Um, we'll hold on to it until we get to town, though, because we are going to want to buy provisions. As much as I would love to level someone up. Plus strength. Um, that would be great if we could get Gunnulf up to level 5 and give him plus 3 strength, because he currently has... Plus 3 break, which is fine, but... With Gun Elf, we basically just want to one-shot people, as far as I can tell. Alright, we'll hold on to our Renown for now. Hopefully, if we can pick up some more before we hit town, that would be good. But, uh, I have my doubts. As Sigur Home approaches, we fear the worst. The once calm lake surrounding it now looks like a bowl that has been flipped. Proud homes sinking into muddy water. A side effect of the quake... What has the rest of the world become on the other side of those mountains? Oh wow, they were lying. This place is not in good shape. There's a dude like on the roof of that house over there, look. Look at him. He's just chilling out on the roof of his house. That kind of implies that this happened fairly recently, because I don't know why else these people would be just like chilling out on the roofs of the flooded houses. Oh man, this place is not in good way. One catastrophe to another, says Oddleaf as you pull into Sigur home. The town appears to be sinking into the lake. Townspeople peek from dark windows and makeshift hobbles further up the hill. No, says Avon, looking frantic. Where is she? He runs to the front of the caravan, looking out over the water. Juno isn't here, and you get the creeping feeling you're not welcome either. Going up river looks out of the question. The beach is bare, aside from the occasional skeleton of a ruined fishing boat. You reluctantly set up camp in the sinking town. Well, hopefully there's a market here. All I'm saying is, how long are you willing to wait? Asks Oddleaf. While taking stock of caravans, you've inadvertently walked into a debate between Oddleaf and Avond. As long as we need to, says Avond. And I don't think we get... I don't think... Ah. And I think we need to get out of here. I don't feel good about this place, says Oddleaf. Why? Asks Rook. What's wrong? Something doesn't feel right, says Oddleaf. The people here are staring at us, like those vultures in the wastes. I'm sorry, Avond. I think Oddleaf is right, says Alette. I saw a man... The whole time we were setting up, he was just watching me. Uh, in a creepy way. And how long before the dredge find us here? Juno will come, says Avon. Just give it a little more time. Rook, listen to me. I need you to trust me on this. Okay, well, there's a market. Uh, we can talk to our good friend Avon, but how about we stock up on supplies before I accidentally trigger us leaving town again? That's not a great price for that. Okay, well, again, let's try and... Oof. Ourselves up to seven days of supplies. Uh, I don't think that leaves us with enough renown to level anyone up, but we'll hold on to the spare for now. We can level up ONF, but again, I'm not spending any experience on ONF, because uh, he's not going to be in the party for much longer, if I remember correctly. Anyways, let's go. Oh, Ubin, or Avon moved. Let's go have a word with him. You're really worried about her, aren't you? Asks Rook. What? Oh, Juno, says Avond. Worry doesn't begin to describe it. If she doesn't find us here, or something has happened to her. 
Are you sure what you saw was real? Asks Rook. It could have been a dream, or... I don't know. You were pretty exhausted. I... I don't know, says Avent. To be honest, I'm not sure anymore. Everything is a blur. Um... Don't tell the others I said that. I have to hope it wasn't just a dream. Um... Oh, we get to ask Avent questions about things. Uh, what's it like to be a mender? Being a mender? I guess I never really thought about it like that. It's just part of me, says Avent. They knew very young that I would join the Order. Born into it, you could say. My mother and father, both menders. The guild is for lots of people now. Builders and healers. Do they all pull lightning out of the sky, asks Rook? No, no, that's not normal. It's one of the reasons I know Juno, says Avent. She's one of the council. She helps me control things like this, so we don't end up scaring people. Uh, how exactly does weaving work, anyways? Well, the hardest part is usually seeing the threads, says Avent. Everything is part of the tapestry. It's made of threads woven together. If you can see the threads, you can manipulate them. I don't know how to explain it, really. It's like trying to play a harp with invisible strings. Look at my staff, for example. Some menders carve intricate patterns in the wood to help them remember the shapes of... Uh, like I said, hard to explain. Uh, why is Bellower still following us? I saw Grofheim as it burned, says Avond. Avond gets a faraway look in his eyes. The sunder blew through it like a tempest. The Varl fell in the thousands. Most of the Sunder left the city and headed south. Who knows where they are now? They might be destroying every town they come to, or heading towards Arborang. Bellor stayed in Grafheim, just for the sport of it, I think. As we fled to Einar Toft, I thought he must want to wipe the Varl off the map completely. But then he came after us. Maybe he knew Ivor was the one who killed Raze, says Rook. Maybe, but I... Let's just make sure he doesn't catch up. Um, do you think this is the end times? I... I don't know what to think. I wish I could give you a better answer. Even if we escape the dredge, that serpent said a darkness was covering the world. I don't know how long that will take, or what it means, even. I'm just trying to solve one problem at a time. The menders are in Aberang. If we can find ships and make it to the capital, we might have a chance. I won't take any more of your time. No, it's okay, Rook. I appreciate the talk. It's good to stay grounded. I spend all day worrying about serpents or sunder. I think a lot of people are intimidated, or scared, maybe of me. Don't worry, it's nothing new. I'm used to it. Maybe sometime we can talk about things that don't include the world ending. Alright, well, we have the option of resting here. Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. Why do I only have two days of supplies? Oh. Uh. Oh, I didn't hit confirm when I bought all the supplies. Okay, so we're going to... How many days total can we get? We're going to get nine, and I'm going to give Avon the benefit of the doubt, and we're going to wait here for two days. But if Juno's still not here by the time we're done with that, uh, we're going to have to head on, because I don't like this town. A scuffle is broken out in front of the houses. Thief! shouts one of your people as a group of strangers flee from your camp. Oddleaf is already running their direction. They took our supplies, you hear from nearby. Um, let's try and talk it out before we start a fight. You wander onto a beach where some men have been waiting for you. Some terse words are exchanged about whether anything has been stolen or not. You don't see who draws the first weapon, but it stops the conversation cold. Okay, well, I guess we're having a fight anyways. Alright, so we don't want to let in this fight because we're fighting people. We want... We want another damage dealer. Let's bring Nid for another archer. Uh, yeah, this looks like a reasonably okay setup. We can get some experience on people who don't have it yet. Well... Ekel is the only one who doesn't have... Oh, and Mogan, actually. Uh, items we can give out... We have some lower-level items, right? Ekel's... Everybody already has items, except Nid, who... Yeah. It's not worth... Nid should be keeping out of danger anyway, so it's better for Ekel to have that. Oh, boy. Well, let's uh, see what the locals want. Um, hmm. we are teensy bit outnumbered here. Okay, well, these guys are pretty low strength, and Ivor's got a decent chunk of armor. That guy's reasonably strong. Um, these dudes are also pretty weak. So this actually seems like a, uh, there we go, give Rook a little bit of bonus armor. Give everyone a little bit of bonus armor. 
So, what we can do here, try and focus on these guys while Ivor fights these dudes over here. All right, let's get those archers first. Um, good. All right, so we can basically cripple this lady. There. All right, we don't have to worry about her anymore. Uh, they are running away from Ivor, which is entirely reasonable in my point, in my uh, opinion. He's a scary dude. All right, Mogan, let's get you up here again. We're just gonna try and stack some damage on this dude. There we go. Get these guys nice and weak before we. Uh, oof too much damage. Uh, that guy's actually got a lot of armor. Can go give him a quick whack, but it's gonna leave Ivor open to it. He doesn't actually have that much strength, though. How much move has he got? Okay, he'll be able to move into melee next turn anyways if he wants to, so yeah, we may as well get the first hit in. Actually... Slayer with one health, shooting Ivor. Doing lots of damage. Um, Alright, this guy's injured, this guy is not. Rook may as well move into melee range, because it's going to keep our... Uh... Okay, that guy gets to go next. Alright, so he should be our next target. Which is fine, because we can actually uh, reach him. Alright, so we move Rook up to melee, so he's blocking them from... Uh... Oof. Blocking them from getting to our back line. Oop. Armor break on that guy. Oof. Alright, that's rough. Alright, Oddleaf, you have some targets here. Let's move you up like so. Who's going next? Is it... Okay, it's that guy who's already injured. Well, we can injure him a little bit more. In fact, we can injure him quite badly. Hmm. Block chance, though. Alright, I'm actually... We're better off moving you closer so you range on more people. Hopefully this doesn't get blocked. Okay, good. Alright, now he doesn't have much strength to do anything. There we go. Who's going next? This guy... Who's that? Oh, this is that guy all the way near Ivor. Okay, well, we're not going to be able to reach him. What is your special ability? Fire arrow at greater range with 100% chance to hit. Interesting. Ooh, that is pretty nice range. Okay, again, move you up here so you've got range on everybody. And let's put some damage on this dude. This guy gets to go. He's backing away from Ivor. Now they're all going for, uh... Okay, Echo's in a rough spot right now. Um... Not a ton that I can do about that. I can put him back... He doesn't have, uh... He doesn't really have any defensive things. All units adjacent to the target. Um... So, if I can... Ah, uh, their archers are going next, and I can't really... Okay. Yeah, we're just gonna move Echil back slightly, I think, is our best bet. Okay. Their archers are... They're all going for Echil. Oh, no. They're going for Nid. Okay, that's rough. Well, this lady's going next, so she needs to take damage next. Four damage will make her a little bit less useful. Like, okay. Alright, Ivor. Let's, uh. That guy's going next. Alright, we need to weaken him some. In fact, we can just put him in a really inconvenient spot here. Ooh, that's a lot of damage. Okay. Alright, Rook. Um, this dude in front of you is... Let's see. Who's going next? Oh, it's the dude in front of you. Okay, well, we can actually put a decent chunk of damage on him. Using our special here, because we've got two archers in range. Although, I'm not sure how much damage that's actually going to do. Hmm. Well, it's a pretty good shot, so... Wow. All right, we did one damage. Ooh. All right, we're taking a bit of a beating here. Who's next? 
Archer lady with one health. Okay, that's fine. Um, who else is next? You are almost dead. Alright, in that case, let's... Ah, that guy's just out of range. Okay, let's focus this guy then. Go. That's good damage. Oh, that armor break, though. Okay, if you remain stationary, um, we can just knock that dude out, but there's not a ton else that you can do here. Right, who's going next? It is that guy, so knocking him out is going to make that guy next, but he's also injured. Hmm. <laughs> well, we could just take one of the archers out, I suppose. damage that you took is, uh, hurting. I should do something about this guy, too, because he's probably going to kill, uh, kill that guy next turn, whose name I'm completely blanking on. Echel? Echel. Hmm, but I don't have any meaningful way to damage him. Alright, let's just knock this dude out. That'll at least mean that if anybody is going for Echel, they're going to have to move further. Running out of armor. This dude's going next. Alright, a kill. Um, hmm. What do I do here? I need to damage this guy, or he's going to. Uh, I don't think I can, though. Unless I get really lucky. Right. Yeah, 60% chance of doing 2 damage. Well, that might be enough to keep Echo alive with his 7 armor, so. Hey! Okay. Ooh, all right, Rook's taking a beating now. All right. So, who's going next? The archers are all pretty low except this one, who unfortunately is the one who's going. Well, in that case... Look on this guy. Go. All right, that, this might be someone dead. Oh, kill's still alive. All right, who is going next? You guys are both pretty badly hurt. Um, Alright, I'm thinking we should just knock out their, uh, their chieftain here. Thank you. Oof, alright, Rook is gonna have to uh, back up a little bit here. Who's going next? This guy, this guy, this guy. Okay, that guy's going next. Alright, let's... Uh, Move you out of the way here. There we go. Start getting some damage on this archer if we can. Okay. Oh dear. Oh, still alive with one HP. Okay. Um, this archer is the only one who's really threat to us. Actually, I guess they're all kind of threatening right now. Well, my best bet is to kill the one who's in full health, which means running over here. Just putting you down. Just hoping that we're, uh, their low strength is going to keep us going. Okay, Nid. Um, who's going next? One of these guys? This guy. Alright, well, I need to start weakening these, uh, these dudes. This guy doesn't have enough strength to do anything. Alright, we're gonna focus this guy then. Okay, okay. So, Alright, that's less good. Alright, health dude is going next. Uh, we can maybe not do anything about that because Echil only has one strength left. Okay. Well, he's got plenty of armor. Actually. He's got seven strikes. So there's a decent chance his hit's gonna get through if he tries it. I think we're better off just uh, getting this dude's armor some. Okay. Oh, Nid might be dead. Yep. Rip. All right. Such is life. Okay. Uh, I guess it's time to start cleaning people up now. 
you're going next. Find my meat. Just gonna go over here. There we go. Ah, oh, shoot. Ah, damn. I'm gonna leave you where you are, because you only have one HP. I'd rather, uh, deal with your friends first. Particularly, the guy who's mostly at full. Oof. Alright, Eccles having a rough day. But, can do this. Okay, see, the description of Guts is throwing me off here because it says does damage to adjacent targets to units adjacent to the target. I guess because it's a self-cast, the target is technically him, but that's a really confusing way to run an ability. Anywho, um, I still need to deal with this guy, but I can't reach him right now. So I guess we're just gonna chill for a turn. This is the guy who needs to go away. All we could actually do... Nah, I'm just gonna start clearing people. I was debating battering ramming him down the line to see what would happen, but... Better off just... Doing damage here. Take this guy out of the fight. Okay, that's fine by me. I probably should have done Guts instead, because it wouldn't be deflected. Well, that's fine. Wait. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Take a swing at Oddleaf. Don't get him very far. Okay. people down is not great. Um, picking a fight with all these random villagers is probably also not great. Oh, Mogan's ready to... Yeah, Nate got injured. I, uh... I don't know that we should wait around in this town anymore after, you know, killing a bunch of them. It seems like a not great idea. The thieves scatter pretty quickly when you start laying into them, but when you return to the caravan, you discover why. Even more supplies have gone missing since you rushed out to fight. Ah, jerks. Alright, well, we're down to a week's worth of supplies. We have... We're now, we might actually level someone up real quick just before we, uh... Before we end for today. No, because Ekel's the only level 2 person. Oh no, Nid. We leveled Nid up. Great. Let's do that. Oh, you're already level 2. I just didn't spend your points. Okay. Good information. Well, let's get your break up, because that'll help us against the Dredge. And let's get your... Strength up. Okay, I guess we don't have anyone to level up. Well, good to know. Either way, that is, I think, where we're going to call it for today. So, thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next episode. Goodbye.